Now I've mentioned the, in Bragg's own words, his assessment of the contribution of the Manchester School, and he mentioned Bradley and the powder method. And Bradley, um, this is actually from a student of Bradley's, um, I couldn't find exactly uh, a, a Bradley powder image, but this shows the variation in uh, adding uh, cadmium uh, to uh, this uh, alloy, uh, adding cadmium to silver, and gradually progressing uh, from this type of, of powder pattern um, all the way to this type with different phases in between. We have the alpha, then alpha plus beta, beta plus gamma, gamma, gamma plus epsilon, and so on. So this really very complicated behavior of metals as a function of, of, of making an alloy and the fingerprinting um, of the, uh, um, the crystal. Now, the preparation of the samples for these um, are uh, very naturally in um, uh, powder form. And that set of lines there doesn't really resemble uh, very much the uh, set of spots. So if we just uh, investigate how that occurs. So here's a spot pattern, produced sort of thing you would get from a single crystal. This is a, a visible light analogy to a single crystal uh, X-ray diffraction pattern. And the way in which um, we get uh, the powder lines is if you imagine many crystallites, and I'm creating that by the spinning of a, this two-dimensional grating, I produce for myself a powder pattern. So metal crystals naturally make a sample which uh, involves these powder crystallites. The diagram is simple enough. In, uh, there are few enough spots that we can see that uh, the crystallites produce these powder rings. These simple patterns used by Bradley um, allowed him to investigate uh, alloys was the example I gave there, but also as a function of uh, temperature uh, and um, uh, pressure as, as parameters. So that's just a, an, another glimpse of the, uh, the Bragg Manchester School.